Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this bald-faced hornet nest removal I did in Malvern, PA. Uh, this is an aerial nest building yellow jacket, aka bald-faced hornet. So this was on the side of a customer's house and they asked me to come and remove it. So um, I did my vacuum technique. There really was no way that I could relocate the nest as a whole just because of how it was mounted on the side of this house um, to where I could get it where it wasn't um, going to be damaged enough that they would be able to... Uh, that the, the adults wouldn't be able to get out of the nest. So I just vacuumed up the foragers and tried to save the queen because I wanted to just relocate the queen herself onto one of my nests that already relocated um, since both of those relocations are now queenless. So I did a little speed up here of the, uh, of the vacuuming because you guys have seen that many many times in my videos people still ask to see the vacuuming so I figured to speed it up and shove 20 minutes down into like three minutes if even that so just try to get them stirred up tap on the side of it get them to come out and it's actually there was no swarm with this at all I was able to get most of the adults right away to where the um, there was no pheromone response or um, alarm response shoved into the nest so they didn't really swarm me at all. I probably could have done this one without a suit. So I'm just pulling it off this um, light sensor and off the siding into the bag. And then I put it in my Rubbermaid tub and opened up the, the bag a little bit so that way they could breathe. And here's the queen. There's the queen left over. I'm going to try to see if I can locate her onto one of my other nests. Alright, so I got done feeding a larva. Larva. So I literally took a dead larva that was hanging off the side of the nest and cut it open and fed it to these larva that were in here that were obviously very hungry. All the ones I'm finding are alive. I was hoping to get a dead one. This is actually the gut of the larva. I couldn't find any more dead ones, so I just kind of started divvying out the only dead one that I found and giving them to the other larva, and they were just going to town on it. And this is actually what the adults do. The adults bring back chunks of insect meat and then feed that hole to the larva. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. So what they do is they kind of like indent it onto their, what I call their bellies, and then they kind of peck at it and chew at it and consume the whole thing. It's funny when you put the food down on them, their bellies like indent. So the more I watched them, the more I realized how healthy this nest still was, and I just couldn't bear just pulling all of the larva out and feeding them to my chickens because they were I mean they were in such good shape and um, so I did decide that I wanted to relocate it even though there was no workers left there were workers about to hatch and I still had the queen and I had the larva so kind of had this bright idea that I would try to relocate it right next to the other nest that I just recently had done um, with that's queenless and figured well they'll have a queen now and they'll have all this larva for food so um, I know that bald-faced hornets will um, kind of make a community of nests. If you can get them, you can relocate them and kind of into a community. And they will kind of adopt one to the other, and foragers will go from one nest to the other from different colonies. So this is a bucket filled with the catch from today. And uh, here's the adults, mostly adults. It's all the adults. Well, a lot of the adults. Still quite a bit down in the bottom of the vacuum, but that's just kind of what was floating on top. There's probably about maybe 60 in this nest, not including the larva and the adults about to hatch. So it's kind of like mid-season for this for these uh, this particular species of yellow jacket. So their nests aren't quite to full capacity yet.
So this is the nest that I originally relocated. You're attacking my camera. You're attacking again. the camera like crazy already. But they see they put solid paper down over top of that um, that other comb. So I decided to just put this comb right next to it. The queen was actually in between the two. Um, this is not unnerving at all. Yeah, it got to be intense because they were swarming me, and this is after like five minutes of me holding my hand there. So a little bit of time lapse just showing how busy it got. But, um, so the one on the left is one that I did just recently, I think on my most recent video. And they papered over the whole thing, which is great. And they're starting another layer. Well, now they were flying from that nest over to this nest while I was holding it. So you can see that there's one there between my fingers. And that's actually, that's not the queen. The queen's actually between the two um, comb layers. So I just used some hot glue, just like I did on the last one. It worked really well. So I just used some hot glue, stuck it up there, held it there. Oh my god, I was there for like probably 10 minutes just holding that there, trying to get it to stick. Now we're back to regular speed. One, <laughs> one yellow jacket got stuck on the glue string hanging there. And it's stuck. So unfortunately this was getting close to uh, to dusk, so um, it was kind of hard for my camera to pick it up. It was actually darker than what it looks like here in the video. Usually that's the other way around, but I had the aperture set a certain way because it was so bright in the beginning of the day. So this is cool. They were like they were still swarming, which I kind of was glad that they were doing that because then they were exposed to seeing that new comb put there. And it was like they didn't skip a beat. They went right over to looking at it. So this is the next day, and the chickens were waiting for what they thought was going to be a meal. Play-Doh. My kitty cat, Play-Doh. Play-Doh. P-L-A-T-O. Like the philosopher, just not as bright. What? And there's all these adults all over that, tending to the larva. No larva looked dead. I, I was, and the queen's still in there. Queen's still I was in checking there. this nest up and down. And so these, this nest adults are flying to both nests. And they're even starting to put some paper. It's up really top. awesome to see that. So I'm excited to see what happens here. It's awesome. So that adult there, top of the camera, top center of the image is the queen, the new queen. Well, the, the queen for this particular comb that I just put in place. But all those adults there are not from this nest, they're from the nest to the left. And they were just foraging. They were coming back and tending to larva. You can see the bottom comb there. There's larger larva that are just starting to weave. They, the one in the center already weaved a new cap. I just, yeah, there's some progress. And it's really neat to see these guys adopt this nest and adopt this queen. I was kind of afraid that they would kill her, but they didn't. And they've been communicating, and it's really interesting stuff. So that's the queen that's walking on the top of the lower comb in between the layers, the one facing us right now. She, she has a slight yellowish color to her <laughs> as opposed to the other ones that are solid yeah, white. Buddy. Solid white faces. Queens always kind of have a little bit more of a yellowish tint. That's the queen right on top of that lower comb. Not to mention she's significantly bigger. Damn it, chickens, you're gonna stir up these horns. Alright guys, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this relocation video. If you guys are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you guys are already subscribed and you're coming back and checking out my content, thanks so much for supporting my channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.